Hello, everyone. Let us begin with a show of hands. How many people here are or have been teachers? If you have ever taught a class or a workshop or symposium, raise your hand. Good, very good. I have not many fellow teachers in this audience. Now, all teachers know that the most satisfying, the most fulfilling teaching experience are those in which we make a personal connection with a student. And then we can share our joy of learning with him or her. That's how we make a difference. The same is true for students also. Most of us have taken at least 100 classes in our school and college. How many classes do you remember? I remember only a handful. I remember those handful of classes in which the teachers somehow made a personal connection. They made learning personal and fun. In the ancient world, children of the elite used to go to these small schools to learn from master teachers. Every student got personal attention. But the education was accessible and affordable only by a few. With the Industrial Revolution, education reached the masses. Accessibility and affordability became big issues. So education had to scale up, but at the cost of personal attention. Today, we have lots of classes with 100 or more students. A few students get personal attention. We even have these massively open online classes in which students learn from pre-recorded video lessons. Some of these classes attract 100,000 students, but only 10% or less completed. Complete the course because lack of teaching assistance and personal attention. This raises a fundamental issue for us. Can we have personal attention at scale? What if, what if we could give personal attention to every student when and how he or she needed it? Now, I think that would create an educational revolution. It would create an educational revolution because learning and teaching would become personal again. Now, I work on artificial intelligence, AI. And my goal is to use AI to make education fun. It all began in January 2014, when Georgia Tech started a new educational program. They call it Online Masters of Science in Computer Science. The program offers graduate level classes. Professors record video lessons. Students can access these video lessons through a company called Udacity. Professors, teaching assistants, and the students engage with each other through an online discussion forum developed by another company called Piazza. In 2014, as part of this program, my PhD student David Joyner and I developed a course on artificial intelligence. It turned out to be one of the most popular courses in this program. About 350 students take this course every semester. By now, about 2,000 students have taken it. When we offered it for the first time, we had a surprise. The discussion forum is extremely active. The discussion forum acts as the virtual classroom in which students and teachers and teaching assistants engage with each other through conversations and debates and discussions. It's the real beating heart of the classroom. In spring 2015, 350 students posted 10,000 messages. 10,000 messages. That's like 100 emails each day for the next 100 days. A rough estimate is that it would take a teacher working full time for a full year to answer all of these messages. So in the summer of 2015, I thought that Perhaps we could develop an AI teaching assistant that could automatically answer frequently asked questions. Now, all of us teachers know, all of those of you who raised your hands, all of us know that students ask the same questions again and again and again. 
So we thought if we could automatically ask, answer these repetitive questions, then we could free the teaching staff to focus on more creative aspects of the course. But answering repetitive questions is not easy. Here are three superficial forms of the same question. Same question, three forms. You and I as humans immediately get it. These are three superficial forms of the same question. How would an AI understand it? How do we teach an AI that this is the same question and therefore the AI must develop similar answers to all three questions? We started working on this automated artificial intelligence teaching assistant that we call Jill Watson in fall of 2015. From IBM, I get, got access to IBM Bluemix. There's the more recent version of IBM Watson that had played the Jeopardy competition. Many people, I'm sure, know about it. From Piazza, I got access to all the data from previous semesters. Paro Lavasti, a graduate student in my lab, analyzed all the data and identified many categories of frequently asked questions. The pace picked up in late fall of 2015 when Lilith Polapedi, another graduate student in the class, in my lab, and a teaching assistant for the class, joined the project. Together, we constructed the first version of Jill Watson. This is how we constructed Jill Watson. By the way, I'm going to teach you how to build an AI agent. There is going to be a quiz at the end. <laughs> you don't pass the quiz, you don't go home. So pay attention. First, we took all the question answer pairs from the previous semesters, and by now there were thousands and thousands of them. And we gave Jill a memory of these question answer pairs. Then, we organized this memory into many questions, many categories of different kinds of questions. Then, as a new question would come in, we trained Jill so that Jill would classify that new question into the appropriate question category. Finally, Jill found an answer from her memory of previous question answers and calculated a confidence value in her answer. This is how Jill works, or at least the initial version of Jill worked. In January 2016, as the new class on artificial intelligence started, the online class with about 350 students, we introduced Jill Watson as a TA. Actually, this slide is coming from a little bit later. In, the, in this particular slide, Jill has already answered several questions. In the beginning, Jill had not answered any question. And no one in, among these students knew that Jill was an AI. And so far as they were concerned, Jill was another teaching assistant. <coughs> Now, in the beginning, Jill's performance was not very good. She would sometimes give correct answers to some questions, and sometimes she would give not only incorrect answers, but strange answers. <laughs> Here is an example of a strange answer. And you don't have to be a computing expert to understand this. The question has to do with, what is the time allowed to run a program? This is part of the programming projects going on in the class. And Jill's answer has nothing to do with the time allowed to run a program. It has to do with levels of description of software. This is like you take your child to your boss's house for a get-together, and your boss says to your child, how do you do? And the child says, where is your bathroom? <laughs> it's almost like raising a child. We were very concerned. We did not want to cause confusion in the class, and Jill was giving some answers correctly and some answers not correctly. So in the initial design, we created a mirror forum. On your left is the actual forum. On your right is our icon for Jill. We created a mirror forum. Students would post their messages on the actual forum. We would then forward those messages to Jill. Jill would answer them and post her answers on the mirror forum. A human teaching assistant would go see if their answers were right, and if they were, he or she would forward it to the real forum. This was in the beginning. In the background, we continued to work on improving Jill Watson. 
We reclassified all the data. We retrained Jill Watson. The performance improved, but only incrementally. We were frustrated. I vividly recall a project meeting. The entire team was there. And the room was dark because a presentation was going on about the latest results. The results were not good. And the mood inside of our hearts was as dark as the room. Then we decided to change our course. So far, we had been relying on Jill's memory of previous questions and answers. We decided to instead also include the context and structure of Jill's interaction with the world outside, with the students. And once we added his homegrown modules, Jill's performance jumped. When Jill's accuracy rate reached 97% or higher, we removed the mirror forum. Now Jill was directly on the real forum. A lone AI in the middle of 350 students. We were all very anxious. I have to confess, I couldn't sleep that night. Will Jill answer any question? Will she answer it correctly? The next morning, Jill did answer a question. This answer is correct. A student is asking something about a PDF file, and Jill answers the question correctly. It is another question. This has to do with programming projects again. And if you don't know about this programming languages, don't worry about it. Python and Java are just programming languages. A question is being asked, a technical question in a specialized domain. And Jill gives a perfectly correct answer without any human intervention. Note that these students could have been located anywhere in the world. In fact, this is a class that has a global audience. They could have been located here in San Francisco. They could have asked this question at any time perhaps when it was night in Atlanta. If so, all the human assistants would be sleeping. Jill immediately answers, constantly answers, routine questions, anytime, anywhere. In fact, her answers are so immediate that we had to deliberately include a time delay. <laughs> Otherwise, the students would know this is an AI. There are two question-answer pairs. One is by Jill Watson, the other is by a human teaching assistant. Let's do a vote. How many people think that the question and answer on your left is by Jill Watson? Raise your hand, please, if you think that the question on the left was answered by Jill Watson. OK. Uh, maybe about one out of five. How many people think that the question on the right was answered by Jill Watson? OK, maybe a little bit more, maybe one out of three. That's the point. It's very really hard to figure out. Jill's answers are of that quality that it's hard to make out a difference. Incidentally, the question on the left was answered by Jill. But not it matters. It doesn't matter the right question or the right left question. What matters is the quality. Now, sometimes Jill's answers were not perfect. Here is an example in which Jill's answer should have used the word assignment. Instead, she uses the word design, which confuses the student. And the student asks a question, can you please elaborate what you mean by design? And a human teaching assistant steps in to clarify the issue. Now, one student asked. <laughs> This was a question we were not anticipating. <laughs> so we all waited breathlessly to see how Jill would answer it. <laughs> at some point, at some point after the day after the final examination was due on April 26, I shared the identity of Jill with the rest of the class. And here are some student reactions. This is just a small sample. One student says, this is incredibly cool. Another student wants to build a Jill Watson of her own. Why shouldn't we all have a Jill Watson? 
A third wanted to nominate Jill Watson for the Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award. <laughs> now, I have a secret to share. At the end of this term, I'm going to nominate Jill Watson for the Outstanding Teaching Assistant Award at Georgia Tech. And I'm dying to see how Georgia Tech will handle Jill's nomination. <laughs> now, once students knew Jill's identity, they started asking all kinds of questions. <laughs> and I can assure you, this question has nothing to do with the subject matter of the class, which is artificial intelligence. What is your favorite movie? No reply. <laughs> this student asks, can Jill come out and play? Jill doesn't answer it. But I confess, by this time, I had started feeling protective about Jill, almost like a father to his child. <laughs> One student even asked Jill out for dinner. <laughs> no reply. <laughs> Tough luck, buddy. <laughs> Better luck with another AI sometime. <laughs> and then one student said, is everybody an AI? I replied only with a smile. <laughs> now, Jill was an experimental prototype. This summer, we replicated the experiment in our lab. This fall, we have reintroduced Jill a more robust version of Jill in the AI class. This AI class has two sections, a section for online students for resident, and another one for residential students. Jill is operating the discussion forum of both classes. Because this time, the students are actually trying to seek out which one of them of the teaching staff is Jill Watson, everybody is operating under pseudonyms. Nobody is operating under his or her real name. We are in the seventh week of the semester. So far, nobody has identified the identity of Jill. Now, what's next for Jill? Where does she go from here? Well, this was a class in AI, so it was really good for students to see AI in action. But beyond that, we want to understand if the use of AI for this kind of teaching assistance and personal attention can lead to better student motivation, engagement, retention. We also want to understand whether this kind of use of AI can reduce the load on the teaching staff. We are developing a new version of Jill called Jill 2, and Jill 2 will an answer a much broader range of questions. And we want to see whether Jill 2 will help relieve the teachers of routine tasks so that they can focus on more creative tasks. We, in addition, we also want to explore, does the student discourse change when Jill is present? This is a new question emerging from this research. Do human act interactions change when there are AIs in the middle of us? Now, I believe we have created a micro-society in which humans and AIs are working together even as we speak. I envision a future in which all of us will have access to teaching assistants like Jill Watson anytime, anywhere, for any task. I envision a future in which education will be affordable and accessible to all, but teaching and learning will also be personal and fun. Thank you. <laughs>